Welcome to Japan, a fascinating country where old traditions and new technology live side by side. With some of the kindest people you've ever met. Thank you. Are you good? Yes. <laughs> That's good. Our journey will take us all over Japan, from the bright lights of Tokyo to the calm and quiet Kyoto. Over the next two hours, we'll discover what makes Japan so special. From its beautiful cherry blossoms coming soon in spring, to its unique and fun activities. I'll be showing you everything from how to get trains in Japan, to what tickets you need, to how to order food, and also how to avoid the busy crowds. There is a lot of other tourists here. I'll also be sharing with you some budget and non-budget accommodations, as well as some travel hacks to get the best out of Japan. Not only that, but we'll also be going to some of the things that you may not know about Japan. Japan has stories and surprises waiting for us at every corner. So whether you're a first time traveler to Japan or you call Japan your home, Come and join me in this extraordinary adventure as we explore Japan together. The adventure begins now. G'day and good morning guys from the beautiful country of Japan. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I've only been in this country for probably about 11 hours now and my mind is blown. So today what we are doing is we are actually going on the ferry that is right behind me. So we need to go for a little walk down there. We just got off two metro stops from our hotel located in Shim Imamaya. So we also picked up one of these passes, which is something I definitely recommend you getting. It is 36 Australian dollars or 28 US dollars and for one of these you get two days of about 40 free activities and unlimited metro rides as well. You can't beat that. So come with me today as we explore Osaka. Japan is finally open for tourists so let's go and let's have fun. and the air here is so clear there's no pollution we're in a blue sky day and it's long pants and jumper weather but it's not that cold the sun's out I could actually probably get away with wearing a t-shirt right now it is so lovely and I'm so glad to be here in this country Okay, so we just picked up our tickets for the ferry. Unfortunately, it was fully booked until 1.30. So we have about two hours um, to kill um, until we can get on, but we do have window seats, which is really good. So right now we're gonna go to Osaka Castle and check that one out. One of the popular um, American sports here is actually baseball, believe it or not. The Philippines had basketball and here they have baseball. So yeah, who knew? But um, the Japanese love their baseball. So yeah, we just stumbled across this walk into the castle, but uh, yeah, I'll try not to get hit. So yeah, as you can see, this is a beautiful, beautiful country. It's so quiet, it's so peaceful, the people are so respectful. I'm like, I'm low T, like, I'm low key tearing up. I'm tearing up! <laughs> Just a little bit because it's like so different. You don't see, you don't see this high level of respect anywhere in the world. And it's like, I feel like the whole city has just done like a yoga session or something. That's how calm everyone is. It's so quiet, it's so nurturing. The trees are lovely, the sun is out. People are running, they're exercising. People look fit and healthy. And there's a train, <laughs> like look at this train. Radio, so we're walking up to the Osaka castle now. Oh my gosh, 
<laughs> I'm so excited. I know I keep on saying how excited I am, but I really am. Like, I'm not just putting this on for the vlog, guys. Like, I am very excited to be here. I've wanted to go to Japan for so long now and I'm finally here and this time like I've I have this YouTube channel so I can even share how I'm feeling and everything I experience so yeah today's just gonna be a good day. I love people something something smiley face. So this lady here, this cleaner, is raking up the leaves to say I love Osaka in Japanese writing and then a smiley face at the end. <laughs> can this city get even, can this city get any more cooler? What? Just a few fun facts for you guys. Osaka was was founded in 1498 and the castle that we're going to now was founded in 1570. So let's go check it out. So believe it or not, this behind me is a shopping center. <laughs> yes, it has shops and restaurants in it right next to the castle temple that we're about to go to in this massive park here i tell you what japan just does everything on steroids everything is perfect grand amazing normally this would cost i think eight dollars but um yeah we get in for free with our pass so that's a bonus so there's actually a wishing well here just behind me so people have chucked in coins and even notes into the well uh, to wish for things and good luck but um we're just in front of the castle now so let's go in so we've just made it to the top of the castle and you can literally see all over the city. It is so nice today. And like the lovely autumn colored trees, this whole park and the moat around as well. Man, this is so nice. So when you're coming up here, there's no filming on the third and fourth floor. Um, so that's a museum. Um, the reason for no filming is to protect the rights of the artworks and the art in the museum. I'll be leaving the Google map links to everywhere to everywhere we go in the description as well um, so you guys can check it out when you come to Japan but wow like you can literally see the mountains so far in the distance that's how clear it is there's no pollution the air is fresh people are smiling birds are chirping what a great day So these exhibits right here are using holograms. That's the first time I've ever seen holograms before. Oh my gosh, there's gonna be so much technology in this city, it is crazy. <laughs> I'm so excited. Look at this stone wall here. That would have taken so long to build with these heavy big rocks and trying to align each one correctly and then have a straight top like there is here. The Japanese people are so good at engineering. So the innovation here is just so high. As I've already said, you're probably gonna hear me say that a lot. Actually, quite a fun fact is the life expectancy for Japanese people is very high at 85 years old. And that's due to the low obesity rate in Japan and how they eat. Uh, they eat a lot of fish, a lot of plant-based foods, and that, and the high standard of living as well to 85, which is amazing. And obviously with a great healthcare system too. So yeah, you can really see that in Japan. It's super fascinating. So as we're coming back out now, the lady's doing another rake of leaves on the other side, saying the exact same thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
So we're just walking up to now some um, local street markets, so let's go check it out and see if we can find some food. Well, there's so many options, I do not know what to choose. And I don't know what anything says because it's all in Japanese, so um, let's see how we go. Radio, so I managed to pick up one of these noodle dishes with some type of meat and lettuce. Um, they didn't speak English, so I just pointed and I just said one. So I um, got some chopsticks too. Mm. So I'm about to use my first ever vending machine here in Japan. They have 100% orange juice, so I'm going to get this one. You just put the money in, click what you want, and bam. So let's give this a taste. Made from the Coca-Cola company. Fun fact. Oh yeah, that is good. That is definitely 100%. Good stuff. All right, so now it's time. We're gonna get on the ferry, go around the uh, river here, so let's go. Wow, this looks very posh. Windows are totally open as well. this window seat I cannot wait it's gonna be so much fun you can probably hear in the background as well there's some really nice music playing all white interior windows above us as well so you can even see the sky sun is just glistening off the water here and it's really nice to just go around the city and see different buildings from different perspectives we just went past the castle then as well that we just went up so yeah it's really cool there's also fishermen on the side fishing and yeah people just enjoying their sunday radio so we just jumped off the boat then that was a uh, that was really really fun so right now we're going to a observation deck we got to jump back on the metro so uh yeah let's go So check out this tree here. There used to be a pole, well there still is a pole holding it up. Um, it looks exactly like this, but the tree has grown into the metal. You'd think when the tree brushed up against it, it'd sort of just move off, but it's grown into the metal. <laughs> Such a weird thing to say. We gotta go to Shin Sabashi. By the way, it is really easy to get the metro and trains here. Um, there's all signs in English, and if not, you can ask a staff member. Um, with the pass that we got, we got free metro rides. Otherwise, you can use the ticket machine to pay cash and just get a ticket as well. So don't worry, your first time will probably be hard, but after that, you should be fine. just came out of the main train station and we are right in the center now of Osaka so we just have a little bit of a walk to the observation deck but first impressions of the center it is crazy it is massive Japan vibes obviously but like all the signage the advertisements the people um, like people dressed up in business clothes you have people who like are wearing like anime sort of like costume stuff it's like it's crazy, the signs, the culture, the smells. <laughs> it's just, I'm actually getting a little bit of culture shock right now. Check out this car here. It looks like a toaster. <laughs> So this is the building we're about to go up to. Oh my gosh, this should be fun. Let's go. <laughs> this is why you have to come to Japan.
Okay, wait until you see this. My mind is blown. So they also have a gate here filled with love locks. So if when partners or people get married, they can come and lock their uh, their love on, on this gate, viewing the entire city. It's pretty romantic, isn't it? Maybe one day I'll, um, I'll get to do the same. So there we go, our first successful day exploring Osaka, Japan. I hope you're liking the documentary thus far. Next up, we're going to be exploring some other sites in Osaka. So you might also be wondering, Jack, how are you getting data when you're going around Japan? What's the best way to get a SIM card? Well, that's where Nomad eSIM comes in. Thank you, Nomad, for sponsoring this video. So if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that Nomad has been a part of my travels for years now. I use them in every country that I go. So you might be thinking, Jack, what is an eSIM? Well, let me break it down. Essentially, an eSIM is a app on your phone that creates a digital SIM card. So all you have to do is install the Nomad app on your phone, click what country you want, and buy a package. For me, when I was in Australia before my Japan trip, I went onto the Nomad app, clicked Japan, and chose the package that I wanted. And bam, as soon as I touched down in Japan, I had data just like that. So no more lining up in long queues at the airport waiting for your physical SIM card. Personally, I find that having an eSIM is a great thing to have. Being able to have data when you're seeing the immigration officer and having to show your hotel booking, or even when you're just traveling around and needing Google Maps, posting Instagram photos, and I can even hotspot my phone to upload YouTube videos as well. If you use my code JACK92CB, you will get a bit of a discount on your first purchase of an eSIM. So if you're interested in getting an eSIM on your next trip, then click my link below in the description box and get started by downloading the Nomad app today. Let's go. I tell you what, the streets of Japan are very quiet in the morning. Most people ride bicycles or just take the metro or get the train. The cars that you do see are the toaster looking cars or the mini looking cars. So, so yeah, it's actually quite nice because the noise pollution is also down. The real time pollution is also down. It'll be crazy when Japan goes fully electric for electric cars, then there'll be like silence on the roads. It'll be crazy. Look, so many bikes. <laughs> Radio, so we're off to our first activity today. We've got to get on the red line towards platform two, towards Senrichio, I believe I'm saying that right, maybe. <laughs> so let's go. Today's an extremely lovely day too. Like, look at these blue skies behind me. We have came in the best season of autumn. Radio, so we just got off the metro. Now we've got to get on the Osaka monorail. So let's go. So we just got off the monorail and we've made it to our first stop here for today which I'll show you guys in just a second but I just want to show you this massive car park behind me and they've only got this little section filled with cars so that goes to show how very few cars there actually are in Japan and as I was saying before it proves my point there's not many cars people just use public transport it's so lovely but I'm just seeing this amazing view of this uh, monorail coming in now so take a look at this So we have just reached our first activity for today. This is the Osaka 
Ferris wheel at Expo City and this Ferris wheel is the biggest Ferris wheel in Japan and you're about to come on it with me, so let's go. So once again we're using our Asaka Amazing Pass to get on this ride for free. Only 3,600 yen for this which is very affordable. Okay, so we made it in. So excited. This, oh they're waving. <laughs> the biggest ferris wheel in all of Japan, perhaps even in all of Asia but I don't know that. So this is 123 meters. Um, so yeah, let's go up and see this view. Officially now at the very top <laughs> You can see all over the city literally to where the mountains are the whole city You can see mountain the mountain range around the whole city of Osaka. It is epic I have to say though the infrastructure and these roads and the monorails and everything just flows it all just works Everything's so clean well thought out well designed so I'll just quickly go through some of the landmarks that are around here that we'll be able to see. So right here we actually have Tower of the Sun, which is um, a famous, land famous landmark on the outskirts here of Osaka. So this is Tower of the Sun here. Next to it we have um, a Japanese garden. And then over here we have Expo City Mall. They also have a welcome floor mat as you come in as well. I tell you what, the Japanese are so extra. Every little detail they think about with everything. Radio, so we just got to the bottom now, so we're gonna go and head over to the statue and check that out, and also check the uh, gardens out around there too, so uh, let's go and see that. So we are now at our next stop in front of the Tower of the Sun. So we are actually in the place where the 1970 Expo of the commemorative memorial for all different countries around the world built different little expos and um, sort of exhibits. In London, a presentation of scale models of Expo 70, the international exhibition to be held in Osaka from March to September next year. Under the vast canopied roof of the British Pavilion, third largest there, an investment in overseas promotion costing two and a quarter million pounds. Like Britain, Japan is a highly industrialized country, still taking great pains to preserve its traditions. So for a bit of context, there's one every five years. The last one was in Dubai and this one was in 1970. So we're gonna go around here and check them out and see what they were back then and how they were built. But let me tell you, I already know that it's gonna be good. So we do have a massive map. So we're gonna go around here and uh, see what they have to offer. So let's go. So these expos that are every five years, so it depends on the country if they want to put in to, um, to build um, their pavilion and sort of show off their country. So this one that was in 1970, Australia wasn't actually in there. Well, I couldn't see it on the map anyway, but New Zealand, Burma, and a whole heap of other countries are in there. So we're gonna be around, going around and exploring those pavilions today. So uh, yeah, let's check it out. So we've just came down to the lake here and they actually have uh, pedalos or like pedal boats. They're actually a little bit expensive out of my budget, but uh, yeah, if you do come here and you wanna pedal along the lake, you, uh, you can do that. It's probably pretty romantic too, so bring your partner if you've got one. If you don't, go by yourself. So yeah guys, after walking around for a little bit, we realized that all of the exhibits and pavilions were very run down. Considering this was all built in the 1970s, this was no surprise. So we decided to head towards the Japanese garden. So for example, this is one exhibit here that's sort of overgrown. There's not really any entry in, but there's no security guards or anything around, but I wonder if this door, you can open it. No, it's locked. Oh well. <laughs> One toaster car. 
two toaster cars. Four toaster cars. We have now just entered in the uh, rose garden, which is really, really lovely. I actually love roses. Um, on my parents' farm, they actually have roses too, but due to the recent rain, they actually, the roots got rotted and died. Australia's been like pretty much flooding, getting so much rain, but these, um, these roses are really, really cool. Lovely garden. You can smell it too. Really you can smell it. I wish I could like push some scent through this camera so you guys could smell it. Let's walk around here and have a little look. Check out all these koi carp. Wow, there's so many. Look at the size of that one. So right now we are walking into the Japanese garden and I'm so excited to show you guys this because there is two really good seasons for, cin for cinematography in Japan. Number one, cherry blossoms. Unfortunately, we're not here for that. But number two is when autumn comes. And as you can see here, this is really picturesque. Yeah. One thing as well that I've noticed about Japan is it is so quiet. So every time I vlog, I feel like I'm disturbing the peace because everyone is just so silent, so calm, so chill. Like no one says anything unless they need to. It's like, it's so different. There's no one else here. If you want to come to Japan, come this year, come now, before everyone flocks in. Now is the time to come. Like sure, we've seen a few people here and there, but it's pretty special. So this old Japan, so this old Japan, so this old Japan, so this old Japanese man just here was uh, taking photos of the flower. I didn't catch it on film, but he went up and he blew all of the dust out of the flower before he took a photo. It's so nice to see people who are retired just doing their own little thing, and that's his hobby, you know. It's, oh, it's so cool. Soft serve strawberry coin. Okay. Thank you, thank thank you very you. much. Thank Have a nice you. day. See you. Wow. <laughs> Look at that soft serve. Let's give this a taste. Oh, that is good. Wow. That is probably. Yep. That is the best soft serve I've ever had in my life. We just got out of the metro station then and we are now heading to our next activity so stay tuned for that one i'm just loving japan every single thing that we go to is just leveling up my expectations it's just awesome so uh, yeah let's go
So this tower here, that's where we're going right now. So let's go. <laughs> and so we just got up to the top of the tower and this view is amazing. Oh my gosh, look at this. And the sun's setting too, so wow. So right now I'm going to go on the slide. There's no filming allowed, but I'm going to try and sneak this GoPro on there. So let's see how we go. Radio, got my mat, got my helmet. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> We just came into this local sushi restaurant. We saw the board out the front for 900 yen for two people and we just said it was completely in Japanese. We just pointed at that and we said, can we have one? We have no idea what we're getting. They have a very professional sushi chef here. As you can see, this kitchen is very traditional. So I'm very excited to try this one. Um, so yeah, let's see what comes out. I have no idea. Radio. So our sushi just came out. So, let's give this a try. I think you just pick it up like this. And dip. And you dip it in this sauce. Right. Mm. Mm. It just melts in your mouth. Mmm. Oh, that's lovely. To be honest, before I came to Japan, I thought I knew what sushi was, but boy oh boy, did Japan open up my eyes to the food scene. Next up, we are going on the high speed rail bullet train across the country to Shizuoka. We are on the move. And no, we're not going to Tokyo just yet. So we're going about somewhere halfway in between. Let me explain. We are going on one of the world's fastest and most technologically advanced trains in the world. Here in Japan, we are going on the bullet train to Shijiwoka. This train is only going to take two and a half hours to get to. So I'm gonna take you along today, show you the train, give you all the details on how to book your ticket and how to conquer this train when you come to Japan. And I have been told that the views from this train are absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna be showing you that as well. This ticket was 9,000 yen, which is about 90 Australian dollars or 70 dollars US. So a little bit pricey for a two and a half hour journey, but I can tell you it's gonna be worth it. So come along with me and let's go. So to get these tickets, you can book it online and I'll leave the link in the description for where to get that so once you book it online you get a QR code on your phone and then you can go to the ticket machines here behind me and scan the QR code to get your ticket so it's very easy and one small detail I might have forgot to mention we're getting first class today <laughs> let's go They also have a smoking room here. You don't see that very often uh, in Australia or America, let me tell you, but uh, in Japan, quite common. Okay, so we just came up and we've got one of the bullet trains here and another one here behind me. I think this one behind me is ours, but it says it's not in service at the moment, but I think in about 15 minutes it'll come in service. But man, oh man, if this is it, this thing is long all the way down there. 
all the way down there. It's gonna be fun. So I've just sat down to eat my breakfast and that's one thing here about Japan. All the public seating is so comfortable. I sat down, I'm like, oh, this is comfy. <laughs> Not normally used to that in most countries I go to. Alrighty, let's give this a taste. This meal was only from um, one of the little 7-Eleven stores. Only $5, really cheap. Oh, really good, really good. Another thing here is that the conductors are really serious. If I step over this yellow line just here, they come up to you, they're like, don't, <laughs> even though there's a gate. So it's all about safety, but uh, it's quite funny. Oh, we've got one leaving right now. Man, oh man, and that's, its, that's just its starting off speed. Can you imagine when they get to full speed? You know, I thought there was just one or two of these fast trains, but I've seen like eight in the past 10 minutes. The amount of money that has went into this network is crazy. So this is our train arriving just now. <laughs> I'm so excited. So this here is the massive gates we got to walk through to get on the train. It's so different to so many other systems. Oh, oh my gosh. Look at these seats. First class, baby. Let's go. Good evening. <laughs> uh, no, sir. You're in fact in first class. Good evening. Oh. So if you are coming on here with a big bag, you'll be completely fine. A lot of room. <laughs> Alright. Oh, this is a first class seat. Wow. Oh my gosh. I'm going to love this trip. Back we go. Nice. So this isn't just a big seat. We have this amazing footrest here that has two different positions. We have different magazines in all of the netting and compartments. So if you don't like one magazine, you can try another one. And just here, we also have a light <laughs> and a seat warmer in case your bum gets too cold. Japan just thinks of everything. Wow, first class, definitely worth it. So we actually got a discount booking first class early on, so that's something to know. Um, the link in the description will tell you. So if you book um, two weeks early, you can be eligible for a discount in first class, which I think is only an extra 10 or $15, so it's definitely worth it. But um, yeah, I probably should be a bit more quiet now because I think we're gonna go soon. Some of the trains I've been on in Thailand go up to a max speed, I believe, of only 80 kilometers an hour or 70 kilometers per hour. So 300 kilometers per hour is just insane. Wow. This first class experience just gets better and better. We even have our own blankets as well. So awesome. Another thing as well, these windows are so clean and clear. It makes my job easy to film out of them because Man, oh man, some windows that I try filming out of, it's just no chance that that's ending up in the vlog. But these ones, very, very nice. So another thing I love about this train is the free Wi-Fi. <laughs> Whenever you get strong, fast, free Wi-Fi, can't complain. So I'm gonna dig into some work now and do some editing, so uh, let's go.
crazy how very few people there are on this train. A lot of the seats are actually empty. There's actually a faster train that goes an extra 20 kilometers per hour that's a lot more popular, but this one, there's only about eight people in the cart, so really, really awesome. I tell you what, these automatic doors are so cool. You know, especially when you're exploring a train, you can just keep walking other than opening the door, going to the next carriage. It's pretty special. We're going top speed now. I'm really trying not to fall over. Jeez, that would be embarrassing. crazy even though we're going 300 kilometers an hour when you're sitting down you don't feel the speed at all but obviously when I was walking then I was a little bit sway but that's probably just because of the way the carriage is going left and right but man this is crazy to think that you can travel at 300 kilometers an hour that's not on a plane this is the future right here so we've stopped here on the platform for like five minutes so I thought I'd film the train check this out Hopefully the train doesn't leave without me, but uh, that's pretty cool. I'll hop back on, I won't risk my, uh, my luck. The conductors were looking at me as well, so... <laughs> Once arriving at Shizuoka and getting checked into our hotel, the next day we went to do something extremely cool and that's unique to Japan. Pet cafes first appeared in Japan in the 1990s and quickly became a popular trend. 
these cafes allowed people to interact and play with a variety of animals such as cats and rabbits while enjoying a cup of tea or coffee. The idea behind pet cafes was to provide a relaxing and enjoyable environment where people could de-stress and connect with the animals as this was something that was not always possible in the urban environment of Japan in apartments. Over time, the concept of pet cafes expanded to include a wider range of animals, such as dogs, owls, and even reptiles. So we're going to jump into it today and see what it is really about. So get and good morning, guys. Today's video is gonna be quite a different one, but really exciting. Today, we're going to two different cafes in this video. Our first cafe will be a cat cafe. You might be thinking, a cat cafe? What's that? Well, we're about to find out. And our second cafe is gonna be a dog cafe. Cat versus dog cafe. Personally, I am a little bit more of a dog lover. Please mm. don't kill me in the comments. <laughs> Matt behind the camera doesn't look too happy when I say that. I actually have a cat and a dog at home that I haven't seen for a whole year. So yeah, let's go up here to the top of this building where the cat cafe is and see what it's all about. See what it is in Japan that makes these cat cafes so special. And um, yeah, let's go. So we've just came to the front door and already look at this. Your hearts are gonna melt in this video, I promise you. Oh my gosh. little cats here it is crazy I thought there'd be like maybe four or five cats but there's about maybe 15 as you can see this area is so lovely all the cats seem really happy well fed well looked after and I believe that they have vet checkups um, once a month as well where a vet comes in they check all the cats but this is really nice so you can order a coffee you can order a milkshake or or anything you wish um, they have a lot of different drinks <laughs> this one's trying to attack me um, to hello to order our coffee because everything was in Japanese um, so we and I ended up getting a chocolate milkshake oh my gosh <laughs> I'm getting attacked right now <laughs> so yeah as you can see they they also have like a place where you can sit down you can um, read and pat the kittens and and play with them and they're all sleeping here they have little sleeping spots dark sleeping spots as well this one behind here is actually trying to eat um matt's wallet <laughs> ow <laughs> they're just attacking me <coughs> i'm trying to be nice with them and play with them but they're just they're just attacking me Aww. um this one's actually quite friendly but the other kittens are being very violent Oh, trying to trying to vlog here is a struggle when they're all trying to attack you. So this place, my first impressions, mind blown. This is really fun. So it was 500 yen for half an hour. So that's about five dollars or five dollars Australian or about three dollars fifty US. So they even have a dehumidifier over there to clean out the air. And yeah, all the kittens seem really looked after. All the cats seem really looked after. Um, their fur is lovely. Yeah, it's really clean in here. I say it probably gets vacuumed at least twice a day because of all the hair. They also have a fish tank here as well, which I say keeps the cats uh, very entertained. You can also wash your hands here before and after you leave. So it's really hygienic before you pat the cats after. 
So yeah, they're really, really looked after really well. So it's good to see. And this is the uh, little hole where they can do their business in privacy. <laughs> they really think of everything here. It's, it's quite funny actually. So this place is really, really lovely. Um, this is the name in Japanese too. I'll leave a link in the description as well. The kittens are just full of energy and um, ready to play, but you have slow cats like these ones who are sleeping and they're, they're lovely. just got our drinks and the staff owner gave me this. I have no idea what it says so anyone who lives in Japan can you please let me know. It's probably too late by the time you let me know but let me know. I'm, ow! I'm in, ow! <laughs> this one here is a troublemaker you are. <laughs> All it wants to do is hurt me. Let's try this again. Chocolate milkshake. Let's give this a go. I just realized there's a cat in this table. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's literally cats everywhere. Okay. Mmm. Beautiful. Refreshing. Couldn't ask for more. It's actually quite hot today in Japan. Hence why I'm wearing a uh, short sleeve shirt. I've been wearing a lot of winter clothes lately. This place is nice. It's sort of like therapy in a way. You know, if you're stressed, there's no one else here. It's just me and Matt behind the camera. And um, yeah, it's lovely. It's really nice. For 500 yen, $5, you get to spend half an hour with cats. Um, another 500 yen for a drink, $10 in Japan. Can't complain. It's pretty nice, isn't it? So I'm really interested now to see what the dog cafe is like or the Shiba Inu cafe. That's that little meme dog that was turned into a cryptocurrency, a, a Shibu or an Inu. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's magically teleport to Tokyo now, see what that cafe is about. And just like that, we're in Tokyo. So I'm going to sort of throw in a little bit of a surprise here. I did say that you will see me at the Shiba Inu uh, dog cafe, but I couldn't resist to take you guys to a piglet cafe. Right, so we're about to go up here and see little miniature pigs. So come along with me. Let's see what it's all about. Let's see what they have to offer. And um, yeah, when do you ever get to hold a cute little piglet? So come along with me, be right beside me and let's experience this together. We just walked in and there's a pig in the entrance. Spider pig, spider pig. Pigs are even potty trained. This one just did a wee in the, um, in the corner here on the tray. Oh my gosh. Look at this. It has a little bell. Whatever that means. Bell ring, ring in the people. Oh. <laughs> so the pigs don't really like me. They really like Matt, but not me. I think they know. Matt's actually vegetarian and I'm not. And I think they may know that. So, uh, yeah, they're giving Matt all the attention here. <laughs> mm. No, he eats bacon and he loves pork chops as well. I don't. No, I don't. Alrighty, the tables have turned now. I now have a pig. Oh, oh he's trying to bite me. <laughs> Why do you always want to attack me? So it's 1300 yen to get in here. And <laughs> And this, um, this drink was 600 yen. So all together we're looking about 2,000 yen for the experience, which is about 20 Australian dollars. <laughs> this one's trying to bite me. Or, um, hey, you can't eat that. Or $15 US. So we've got some pink milk match the theme. Pink piglets, pink milk. So let's give this a taste. Ooh, that's lovely. Very strong. Strawberry. Mmm. Wow. That's all. Oh, that's very syrupy. 
<laughs> but very nice. And you have these blankets as well that you can put on your clothes to sort of protect your clothes from the pigs trying to eat you because they do try and eat your clothes. Um, but yeah, it's really, really nice. There's about five different little private rooms. We're in a private room and you get two piglets per room. So it's really lovely and something you should definitely do when you come here in Japan. It's so weird, their snouts are super soft and they feel weird. Like nothing like you've ever felt before, they feel really strange. So if you come here, just when they're sleeping, just feel their snouts because it's really, really weird. sleeping in Matt's arms. Take a look at this. Isn't that the cutest thing you've ever seen? Okay, so our half an hour is almost up here. This has been a great experience and something I won't forget. To cuddle little baby piglets, when do you ever get to do that? So I'm excited you guys can be right beside me today experiencing this as well, because it's pretty awesome. <laughs> So this pen here actually has like newborn baby pigs. Oh my gosh. Welcome to the Shibu Inu Dog Cafe. <laughs> Aren't these guys cute? So, if you're familiar with cryptocurrency with the Shibu coin, these are the these are the same little dogs. So this is actually hilarious. So all of the dogs were on this side of the room, and as soon as Matt and I walked in, they all came to sit with us. And we think it's because of the pigs. This morning they can smell the pigs on us, and they're all all over us just because of that. So yeah, this is really cool. We get to experience them. Okay. There's a lot of people here. I don't really know how I feel about the bandana around their neck. I don't really think that they like it too much. So there we go. We just finished the Shibu Dog Cafe. To be honest, it probably wasn't my favorite one. The dogs looked a little bit sad, a little bit worn out. There were some dogs that would just sort of run away when they weren't, when they didn't want to pat. So yeah, it was a little bit, you know, I sort of feel bad for even supporting it, but overall it was about a six out of 10 experience. After spending time with the cute animals, we decided it was time to do some real sightseeing and try to see the famous Mount Fuji. So that's exactly what we did. G'day and good morning guys. <laughs> we are currently in Shizuoka, 
Japan and we have a very exciting video today. We are getting on the bullet train and then two separate trains to a mountain that looks over Mount Fuji and we're also getting a cable cart all the way up there. So come along with me today. Today should be a really fun adventure. I'm going to show you all the different trains we get, leave all the Google map links in the description. So come along with me, be right beside me and let's have a great adventure here in Japan. Let's go. So that's one thing I actually love about here in Japan. Everything is so safe. You'd be fine to leave a lot of your valuables out. Like for example, that boot was just open with all of those packages in there. The crime right here is actually so low that people don't usually worry about anything. So it's really nice and comforting to be in a city where you don't really have to have that on the forefront of your mind. Always be smart and realize what place you're in and you know, be aware of your surroundings. But also when you're in a country like Japan, it doesn't have to be in the front of your mind. So it's really nice traveling in a country like that. Radio. So I'll just explain to you what happened there. So we've got our ticket, well we've got two tickets actually from Shijioka to Ojiwara. Um, I'm probably saying that wrong but <laughs> bear with me. So the two tickets, one means that we're paying for the train there. The second ticket means that we're paying for the bullet train. So combined we put both of these tickets together in the ticket machine and it sucked it through and grabbed it up. So when we get off we'll put both tickets back into the ticket machine and we'll do the same thing. So yeah, that's sort of how it works here with the bullet trains. And as you see, there's one train. So for anyone who likes bullet trains, you're pretty much in bullet train heaven right now. But yeah, so that's how the tickets work. So for those of you who don't know, the bullet train is actually powered by distributed traction, which means on and off, each wheel is powered to make them go. So for example, this one here, <laughs> the wheel would be powered, the next lot would be non-powered. So that's called distributed traction for anyone who didn't know that. Radio. So we're on the train today. Uh, second class, not first class. You can't always ride first class, guys. So, for those who, for those of you who ripped me in the comments last video for riding first class, I'm now in second class. Okay. So we'll be on this train for 45 minutes, and then we'll reach the bottom of the hill, where sorry, the bottom of the mountain that we're going to view. From there, we need to get two more trains. So yeah, let's go. Okay, so we now are off the bullet train and now we've got two local trains to get on to then get to the cable cart to then see Mount Fuji. If you've noticed, I've actually got my jumper back on. It's quite funny in Japan. When you go indoors, it's really hot and warm because they have the heaters on really high. So then you take all your clothes off. But then when you go back outside, it's really cold. So you put all your clothes back on. <laughs> That's why I love Asia so much because it's a constant, you can just wear a t-shirt and you'll be right, but who's complaining? We're still in Japan and this is fantastic. So I just got this from some school children, like little kindergarten six-year-olds. I have no idea what it says or what it means, but um, thanks for the gift. <laughs> Okay, so we just got our two-day pass, even though we're doing this for one day. So this was um, 3,600 yen, which includes the two trains there and back, and also the cable cart there and back. So not that bad, uh, 36 Australian dollars, or about $28 US, so pretty good value if you ask me. But our train comes in just under two minutes, and I think it's actually this one here, so let's get on. So this train 
that we're on now is more of like a commuter train, but the next train we get on is a really scenic train. So I don't think I'll film much of this one, but the next train is way more scenic. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited for that to be able to show you guys all amazing shots of the mountain. All of my friends say, girl, you better take care. Cause that man is trouble, you best be. How good is this? Our second train, the scenic train, with all of these windows, we are right at the very front. Oh my gosh. So this train is actually amazing. It's actually a standard gauge track. So normally most mountain climbing trains would be narrow gauge and also in most mountain climbing trains actually have cogs that help the train up. This train doesn't have that so it's very well built to be able to come up this steep gradient as you can see here in this footage. I don't know how well it shows the gradient of how steep it is but trust me it's steep so these Japanese trains are something else let me tell you. They just said on the speaker then, these tunnels that we're going through is two kilometers long in length and they were built over originally a hundred years ago and still to this day have withstanded many natural disasters as well. Insane, the amount of engineering and build quality even a hundred years ago back then is still lasting to this day obviously with restoration and repairs over time but still so cool. So a little bit more train terminology for those of you who didn't know. This clip here I'll zoom in but there's actually a guide rail next to the main rail. What that does is on tight turns it guides the wheel I guess you could say of the train so it doesn't slip off and derail the train. So on really tight turns it's really actually needed otherwise you know on a steep incline like this the train could derail um, at points in time so yeah having a guide rail is really important. Okay, so we just arrived off the train and we're at hack one right now. The cable car doesn't leave for another 25 minutes, so we're gonna explore this little town around here, possibly get some food and then um, get back on the cable car. Radio, so I just ordered a hot dog. <laughs> Very Japanese, I know, but it was the only sort of quick fast food place. Um, that I could get it in time for another 25 minutes to get on the cable cart. So uh, yeah, should be good. Okay, got my hot dog and got on the tram just in time. Oh man. just came out to this viewpoint and I don't know if you can see but there's a little man um, carved out here into the mountain which is really really cool. Yeah. Japanese people are so creative. They also have this humongous table here so you can look out at the view. It's so extra. Everything they do is extra here. It's crazy but it'd be really nice to get some food and just sit there and admire the view. So cool. I'm really excited for this. Finally a proper cable cart. <laughs> So we are now on the cable car. <laughs> this is really cool. You can see all over in the mountains and the autumn, um, the autumn leaves as well. It's really nice up here. scares me when we go over those middle humps like the the cut rocks and it's always like oh <laughs> but uh no, this is really cool <laughs> Oh, 
also see all the vegetation around here is pretty much dead. So I don't know if that's a good sign to breathe in what we just breathed in, but uh, yeah, anyway. Radio, it's about to be very windy out here, so bear with me. But uh, wow, this is cool. So now we're on the um, on the platform where we just saw all that, I believe, sulfur coming out of the ground. Oh my gosh. Radio, so I've just put on my bigger jacket and um, we're about to go out here where you saw the sulfur before. Bear with me with the audio because it's about to be very, very windy. Um, so yeah, let's go and have a look. Oh, it is cold out here. Yeah, there you go, there's the wind. <laughs> oh, it is cold. Freezing. Okay, I'll show you guys this with um, some music so you don't have to hear the wind noise. Oh. So that footage is not sped up. That is how fast the clouds are moving because of this wind. It is crazy. So right here behind me, you can see Mount Fuji, but it's covered in clouds. So um, I'll wait for the clouds to clear and then film it and show you guys. But wow, this is so cool. Just being right in front of it. So I just looked at the weather and it looks like it's going to be cloudy over there for a little bit longer. So I'll put up some, um, some stock footage for you guys. Okay, so we just came into this like little restaurant out of the wind, out of the cold. It's so nice in here. Even took my big jacket off. So, but I just ordered a uh, rice with cutlet and curry and some some vegetables and stuff. So, let's give this a try. Mm. Oh. Mm. That is so lovely. Really nice and tender. That curry is super thick. The chicken is really, really nice and tender. So even though restaurant food in Japan is relatively cheap and affordable, what's even cheaper and sometimes even more delicious is 7-Eleven or Family Mart food. And you might be wondering, isn't 7-Eleven a gas station like in America? Or well, no. Let me take you on a journey to Japan's 7-Eleven. This morning we'll get a 7-Eleven breakfast, lunchtime we'll get a family mart lunch and dinner time well we're going to get a little mix of both with some random goodies in there as well. Come along with me today, let's get this day started, to 7-Eleven we go. So the good news is when you're trying to find a family mart or 7-Eleven here in Japan, they're only a few meters away. If you look here with me, there's a 7-Eleven just here so let's go. Seconds later. Radio, well that was a fail. <laughs> I got kicked out of that 7-Eleven for filming. Um, I wasn't getting in customer's way, but maybe they just didn't want me to film any outdated sandwiches or something. I don't know. Anyway, that's right. We'll go to a different 7-Eleven and I'll try and be a little bit more discreet and um, yeah, not a very far walk to the next one. <laughs> Okay, here we go. <laughs> Another 7-Eleven, a few minutes away from the other one. Thank you. Okay, the manager in this store, a lot more friendly. <laughs> she let me film 
and she asked if I wanted a bag. I normally say no because, you know, helping the environment, but I sort of wish I got one because holding this camera and this stuff is uh, a little bit tricky, but that's okay. So let's find somewhere to sit. I'll try this food and talk a little bit about um, the store and how it all tastes and how much it costs as well. Radio. so I got three things. I got a Japanese Craftsman hot ice coffee. These are actually hot on the shelf, heated, which is weird. So, and right next to it, they have the cold ones which is even more crazy. I also got a chicken, broccoli, honey and mustard sandwich and I also got a mango blend smoothie and this one looks really really healthy so I'm keen to try this. So this was my whole breakfast. So all of this together cost 670 yen. So first things first, let's try the coffee because coffee is always the first thing you got to have to wake up in the morning. Let's give this a taste. Oh yeah, that is good. Mm. We've got two more things to try, so let's find another cool spot and um, go and try that. Okay, so next up we have the mango blend smoothie. So let's give this a try. I'm really excited about this one. Anything smoothie related? Oh, I love it. Oh, it's not really a smoothie, it's more a juice. Am I meant to shake it? Nope, it's still a juice. <laughs> it's lovely though. But when it says smoothie on it, does it say smoothie? Oh, it doesn't. So there's smoothies next to it. I chose mango blend, which must mean juice. Anyway, so yeah, this juice um, is quite nice. It's really, really fresh. I would tell you the ingredients, but it's all in Japanese. So Japanese followers, you can definitely read this. Okay, so the sandwich, the main glory here. So let's give this a shot. Sort of like an ASMR tutorial video, isn't it? And then there we go. We have the sandwich. Honey, mustard, broccoli, and egg. Yum. Mmm. Oh, wow. That's fresh. One thing that I have noticed, though, in Japan, is they cut the crust off the bread. <laughs> For me, that's actually my favorite part, but a lot of Japanese people mustn't like the crust on their bread, so they cut it off. So we are now waiting for our bullet train, but while we're waiting, I thought I would pick up a snack from the vending machine here. So I'm gonna get a 100% orange juice. Um, this one's only 170 yen, so $1.70 Australian. I'll put the other conversions here. So just a quick snack from the vending machine. Okay, and it's that easy. So we've got our drink. Let's give this one a try. Oh yeah, that definitely tastes like 100%. So good. Let's get on this bullet train. Okay, so we are now on the bullet train. I'm going to get some work done here on my laptop. And yeah, about 40 minutes and then we get on another train after that to Tokyo. But in between the two train stops, we'll go to a family mart to eat lunch. So I'm looking forward to that. Already a little bit hungry, to be honest. Every time I get on one of these trains, it just blows my mind how fast they go. 300 kilometers per hour, and they're currently building a maglift train, which is propelled by magnets, which is actually lifted off the tracks. And that goes 600 kilometers an hour, twice the speed. To put it into perspective, an average international flight goes 900 kilometers per hour. So this is crazy stuff. So I just jumped off the train and um, yeah, now we got to go and find some Family Mart food for lunch and then we're on a different train for our last train to Tokyo. So uh, yeah, this should be fun. Today's already an amazing day. Blue skies, good vibes, lovely people. So yeah, let's go. Okay, so I just had a little look around and there's no Family Mart inside the station, but there's just one I saw on Google Maps just outside the station. So let's go there and pick up some lunch.
There you go, so I've got my lunch here. I've came back into the train station. I, I tried to find a place outside the train station to film, but it was just so busy and all the public seating was taken up. So we're back in the train station. But what I've got for you guys is some grilled pork and this looks really good. It was originally 600 yen, including tax, but without without tax. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Are you good? Yes. <laughs> That's good. Sure. Are you from here? No, from Kichijoji. Oh, Tokyo. nice, nice. I love mm. Japan. It's very good. This Yaki is... Niku, yeah. Yeah, very good. <laughs> it smells good. Oh, yes, it smells very good. <laughs> yeah, 50, 54. To oh, nice. Tokyo. Oh, very good. Yeah. Okay, nice. Soon. Coming soon. Oh, okay. very good. Okay. <laughs> Where are you from? Uh, Australia. Yes. Yes. My daughter okay. was holiday, eh? working holiday. Working holiday in, in Australia. Pass. Pass. Perth. Yeah. She is diver. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. She cool. has secondary price to uh, dive. Dive, yeah. Okay, mm. very good. Yeah, nice. thank you. Yeah, no worries. I like. Australia, but Australia, very Australia good. Australia data is not so good yeah. now. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very good. Okay. Enjoy. See you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> the locals here are so lovely. That was unexpected. Right, guys. So let's try this. So we've got some grilled pork, some rice, and I'll also get actually a little bit of onion as well. If I knew how to use chopsticks, this would be a lot easier. Mmm. The meat is cut super fine, so it's nice and tender. Even though for a microwave meal, this is really good. It was actually originally 600 yen, but I actually got 100 yen off to make it 500 yen just for this dish of all of this rice. So the next thing I'm going to try for you guys is this mystery yogurt of some sort. I don't really know. It has a bunch of Japanese um, and Chinese writing on it. So yeah, let's just give this a shot. I have no idea if it's going to taste good. It smells nice. Sort of like in between Greek yogurt and normal yogurt. Very creamy. Um, the vanilla taste is quite strong. And this was 150 with 10 yen off, which makes it 140, so $1.40. I'll put the other conversions here. For a $6.40 lunch here in Tokyo, not bad. We're going to dig into this and then let's hop on the train to Tokyo. So we are now on the train and heading towards Tokyo. We've got this massive window here that looks out So we are right at the back of the train So we'll be able to see all this like panoramic view of the city it's So epic. So uh, yeah, see you guys Through the power of editing. We're gonna be on this train for I think two hours or two and a half hours I'm not too sure and then we'll end up in Tokyo. I'll see you guys soon. So we just got to my hotel room. Even though this is a food video, I thought I would share this with you because we are paying a pretty good price here in Tokyo for what we're getting. So let's come in and have a look. So as you're walking, you have a lovely sink with a nice mirror, automatic magical buttons and stuff. We also have a um, Japanese toilet, which has, you know, your squirty things and seat warmers and everything like that. And then if you follow me through here, we've got um, double bed, really sturdy. Um, we have to make our own bed, but we get a towel. And we also have a desk for a little work area. Complimentary slippers as well, which is nice. And we also have a fridge as well where we can keep snacks and maybe even a beer or two. And out here we also have, which we had no idea about, a balcony. How good's this? So we have our own little balcony. You can sit out here, have a beer or two and just enjoy this quiet little street here in Tokyo. We actually got this room for 20 US dollars each. 
So that is a really good price. If you're coming to Tokyo with a friend, you could easily share this, get all the amenities. If you're wondering where the shower is, it's actually directly across from our room. It's a shared shower, but they are really clean and have different soaps and shampoos and all of that. And there's actually three showers to choose from. And I also wanted to just show you guys the um, common room work area. So we have a massive TV here, kitchen desk. We have a work area, kitchen sink. And we also have a microwave with a rice cooker and little toaster as well. And then out here we have a lovely um, work area too that looks out onto the streets of Tokyo. And then we also have our very own vending machine in the building, which is so epic. So we can get different coffees and water and fizzy drinks and everything like that. <laughs> So we are back with the third and final meal, which is dinner. So I went to 7-Eleven and Family Mart to pick up two different things. So we've got a um, some type of meat stick in here. So let's just give this a try first. This is more like a snack, but I was really hungry. I don't know how I could be hungry. I've eaten so much today, but let's give this a go. So this one here is from Family Mart. Pretty good. The meat's probably like a seven out of 10, but that sauce is really nice, probably a nine out of 10. Really tender for being in the heating bay all day. Pretty good, not bad, 100 yen, so a dollar for that one. But next, we actually have our main meal here, which is a rice grain shrimp tomato spinach dish. As you can see here, it is filled with vegetables and really, really good. But because we're in our hotel, we have plates here and we're in the common room here. So I'm just gonna do a little flip <laughs> and eat this one in style before it come out. Oh, there we go. And that was almost a fail. So when you get these meals, it's really important to mix it all up. Mmm, oh, mmm, yeah. Yeah, that white sauce is really delicious. The prawns are super duper fresh. Mmm, oh. I'm going to enjoy this tonight. Really nice. What is the better place to go? 7-Eleven or Family Mart? Well, they both have their pros and cons. I would say that you will find more 7-Elevens in Japan, but I feel like Family Marts are cheaper in price. I think that there's more variety in 7-Eleven, but in Family Mart, you can do more things. I believe that you can pay more bills, you can photocopy, you can print. There's more access to ATMs. So if I were to choose, I'd probably choose Family Mart because it's the cheaper one. Even though there's not as many stores like 7-Eleven, Family Mart is still a great option. I hope you've got an insight into being able to afford food here in Japan if you're a budget traveler, if you're coming here, or even just to get a quick snack. If you're not a budget traveler, the food is great. guys so we are here in our first landmark and sort of activity here we are in Sen Shoji temple and it is certainly not quiet here there is a lot of other tourists here this temple was actually built in 645 which makes it over 1500 years old obviously it's had some restorations since then for it to stand to its glory today but this is actually a Buddhist temple here in Tokyo Japan so come along with me let's go check it out and see what it's all about As you can see, as busy as this place is, it's actually really nice and calm. I just feel really calm. Like normally when I'm making these videos, I'm like thinking ahead and how to make the best video, but when you're here, you just get this whole sense of peace. 
And I don't know if it's because people are coming here to pray and there's smoke and people are doing their wishes and their money donations and praying to Buddha. I'm not too sure, but when you come here, I do hope you feel the same peace I'm feeling now because it is just lovely here. And as you can see, this garden here behind me adds to that. It is very lovely here. That's another thing as well, you'll see people come in traditional Japanese clothes to take photos, to pray and do it very traditionally. It's actually really nice. You don't normally see women in Japan wearing their traditional dress, but you see a lot of them here um, at the temples doing that. So yeah, it's really cool to see. This house just here is a perfect example of why everything in Japan is so picturesque. Everything is so photogenic. And this old house, like look at it, it's like so traditional and so old. Just next to the temple too, like, it j Japan just blows my mind with the amount of things you can see here. One thing that I've noticed like walking around Japan is the roads are so like quiet. Like I'm just walking in the middle of the road right now because people just don't use cars. Most of the public transport is so accessible here, especially in Tokyo, that people just don't bother driving. They either ride their bikes or just take the metro or the bus and that's the best way. So really walking around, it's quite a breeze. There's no honking, there's no worrying about someone running into you because you know you'll be sweet. Another thing in terms of infrastructure here is it is very um, wheelchair friendly. All the places are easy to get to wheelchair, like if you're in a wheelchair, all the stores, everything's got ramps, all the roads like come up nicely when you're walking across. It's like literally, if you had a disability and you were in a wheelchair, Japan is a place that you would want to live for sure because it is so easy. And then also another thing I've noticed is for blind people, they have braille on literally everything, on lifts, on um, the um, stop, stop signs, on the um, cans that you buy at 7-Eleven, on the food, on so many things. You just see braille everywhere. So it's really good for blind people because they run their hands over it and they can read it. stumbled across these hands here like carved in the pavement I have no idea what it means so if you're Japanese can you let me know in the comments because this seems like a really cool I don't know like feature or whatever it is but yeah that's interesting front of the Tokyo Skytree Broadcasting Tower. Fun fact, this is actually the largest broadcasting tower in the whole world and we're about to go up it and get 360 degree views of the city. So come along with me, let's see how much it costs and check it out. So it's pretty funny, whenever I'm filming like big towers or something like that, you don't really need to use Google Maps. Once you're in the city center, you just walk towards it because it stands out like nothing else. So yeah, let's go.
just like Santa and his elves, <laughs> meaning workers are setting up a, uh, a display for Christmas. So how cool is that? So we just bought the tickets then online to the tower and it was 2100 yen or 21 Australian dollars or about $14 US. So to be able to go all the way up to the top, it's not a bad price if you ask me. sky deck felt like we we're only in the lift for like 10 seconds boom we were up here straight away it's 350 meters so as you can see behind me we can see the view of all of Tokyo so let's check this out so because the observation deck here is so big the people all around here is actually really spread out so even though there's a lot of people up here and the line here was actually really long it doesn't really feel too crowded even though there is a lot of people up here it's still not that bad so we've actually came up here at the best time not only did we catch the sun setting but also all of the lights over Tokyo so it's a win-win getting the best of both worlds so I'm so glad I can take you guys up here with me and just seeing this amazing view of Tokyo it's honestly blown my mind how big this city is it's so clean it's so well designed the architecture is amazing so well thought out and so so cool So to utilize space as well, I've noticed this a lot when in Japan is they have sport fields on the roof. And just here, if you can see below us, that is a soccer game going on right now. Or maybe, yeah, no it is. A soccer game, a futsal game going on right now on the top of a roof of a building that looks to be possibly a shopping mall. So they're just utilizing space. So, so clever, so innovative. So outside the souvenir shop, you can actually buy a postcard and they will send it for you. So right here behind me is actually a post box, which is really cool. So how's that? You can post something from all the way up this high to your family and they have a different range of postcards as well. So yeah, I found that really fascinating and a nice service. Radio. so we've now made it to the final floor of the uh, observation deck. Now we're just in the queue to get back down. So we're just walking to the metro to go and find some dinner and we've just walked through this lovely little mall that's all Christmas themed. It's really nice. Japanese restaurant um, near our hotel and I have just ordered um, it's sort of like a mystery soup but when we translated it it said Cantonese um, soup so I was really feeling like something with vegetables and noodles so I've ordered this but one thing I wanted to show you guys is whenever you go into a restaurant in Japan they give you one of these warm towels and you can like clean your hands and like your face. Well, I think you can clean your face, I don't know. And then yeah, so it's really nice. It's such a nice treat. And wherever you go, you normally get a free water as well, which is nice. So yeah, we've just ordered this and they also gave us a translated English menu, which is really lovely of them. So the translated English menu matched up with numbers in here. So it's sort of easy for us to translate it. So yeah, let's um see what we get. Radio, so my Cantonese noodle bowl just came out and it is huge. Look at the size of that bowl. It is as big as my head. For 700 yen, it is so worth it. That's only $7 Australian or about $4.50 US. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna try the broth first. Yep, this is gonna be good. <laughs> so. Let's get some noodles, some beef, and some vegetables. I might even get my chopsticks. Chopsticks, actually. So, okay. I'm 
and it tastes so home cooked, so wholesome, so hearty. I even have a little bit of a tickle in my throat, so this is going to fix me right up. So yeah, I'm going to dig into this. After finishing the bowl of noodles that was as big as my head, we decided to explore something quite unique to Japan, the anime scene. For those of you who don't know, anime stems from Japan and it is huge here. So let's dive in. Anime in Japan, let's talk about it. Okay, so get and good morning guys. Today we are in Akihabara, the anime center of Tokyo. I don't know too much about anime, but I'm hoping to learn a lot today and share with you guys all the best spots to come to when you come here in Tokyo to get your full anime fix. Going to be going to some cosplay stores, some comic stores, some toy stores, and all different anime things. So come along with me and let's check out the anime culture here in Tokyo, Japan. Radio. so our first stop today, we are Yonibashi Akiba. This is one of the main technology malls here in Tokyo, Japan. It is filled with different things like hard drives, smartphones, cameras, anything you can think of to do with technology, they have here. I also believe that they have some anime stuff in here as well, mixed throughout. So yeah, let's go in and check it out. So we just came into the first level. First impressions, this place is massive. Everything you need, like we've already seen phone cases, computers, games, hard drives, cameras. My mind is just overloaded right now. So yeah, let's have a look. This place gets so busy. They have one, two, three, four lifts to take everyone up through the levels, crazy. So funnily enough, um, myself and Matt behind the camera also need a hard drive today. So we're hoping we can pick one up for a good price. This place is huge. It just keeps going and going and going and going. Every single bit of technology you can find here. It's literally like clicking on the Amazon technology tab on the internet, but in real life. <laughs> Did you know if you're a foreigner here in Japan traveling, you don't actually have to pay tax on goods that you buy in Japan? And no, you don't collect the tax money at the airport like most countries. They take the tax off here on the computer system, so it's straight away. So if you want to buy something, you might actually be cheaper to buy it in Japan rather than your home country. So for example, for this SSD, here you get 5,300 yen off. So yeah, it might actually work out cheaper to buy it in Japan. They even have electric shavers. Hmm, maybe I could use one of these. They really do have a selection here. Every single brand pretty much has every model of their product in the store. Like that's how big it is. Like hair dryers, I'm just looking. I could probably see 50 different hair dryers. Shavers, this shaving goes on for the next 20 meters. Like it's crazy. For example, this whole section here is just dedicated to paper shredders. <laughs> like what? It's so overkill, it's crazy. So just make sure when you come here, you bring your passport so you can get the tax off. That's one thing that you'll need. It would honestly take me probably days to explore every single aisle in this whole building. So yeah, I'm sure that you guys get the idea. It is big here. So let's go around and find some other anime stores and places and just see what this section of Tokyo is all about. So once you work up an appetite from shopping till you drop, you can come up to the very top floor and get some authentic Japanese food. Food. So yeah, this place is really, really cool. They have all different things to choose from. So yeah, you'll uh, get fulfilled with your 
hungry needs up here, that is for sure. It is crazy. Oops. <laughs> So as you can see here behind me, they have all Pokemon figurines. This is on level six, I believe. So yeah, this is really cool. So you can check this out. They also have those little machines where you put coins in, you twist it, and you can get one of those uh, little anime toys out of it as well. So yeah, they have a lot of stuff here in this shopping mall. So they even have the Shinkansen bullet train right here. How cool is that? As you can see behind me, they have massive TVs here. This one here behind me is 77 inch. So you can really get so many different things here at the best level of quality. It is amazing. And just here behind me, we have an 8K TV. When do you see 8K TVs? They have so many in different sizes too. It's really, really cool. So we are right outside now, the Akihabara Game Panic. This building is seven stories filled with arcade games, so let's go check it out. the top they have a full arcade gaming area so this is really cool they have different anime games and all different types of games to play here so yeah and then the other levels they have vending machines they also have prize winning games and all different things so when you come here you should definitely check this out Here they have these tapping games where you've got to test how quick your reactions are to the different lights and colors. This is crazy. Some of these guys here are really good. So you can even win different little anime dolls and stuff like that here with these claw machines. I've seen a few people try it, but their luck sort of runs out. I think. There's a little trick to it and most people don't win. So across the street we have Gigo, which is pretty much the same as Game Panic, except some different games and you can win a few different prizes. But this one in Game Panic are pretty much the same, directly opposite. So yeah, if you come here, check out both. So just behind me you have Love Mercy. This is a adult shop with a whole, he a whole heap of anime themed costumes and yeah, you could use your imagination for the rest. I won't be going in here today, but it's good to know that that's here if that's something you're interested in. So we just came into Media World, which is on this main street. This place has anything from anime key rings, keychains, costumes, DVDs, magazines, everything anime. <laughs> yes, this place is crazy, insane. For example, we have anime DVDs, everything anime CDs.
they even have little anime dolls and different statues and figurines 365 as well if that's what you're interested in so yeah as much as I'm not really too cultured on the whole anime scene there's a lot of different DVDs magazines books figurines you can all get in this shop so definitely check this one out just behind me we have May Dream and Cafe this is one of the made cafes we won't be going in here today but if that's something you're interested in you should definitely check it out they have maids dressed up fully hair done makeup and everything like that and they serve you different sweets and lunches and drinks so yeah this is something really cool and it's quite popular here in Japan okay so we're now out the front of Ataki Habra Radio Kankan probably saying that wrong <laughs> But this is full of anime and manga figures, figurines, comic books. So let's go in and check it out. So right now we're at Hobby Station where you can get a whole heap of different trading cards. For example, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh and that type of thing. So yeah, this is really cool as well. One thing I did not realize about anime though is how sexualized everything is. For example, a lot of the figurines of the girls, it's very sexualized, which I sort of knew but I didn't really have an idea of how big that was. And yeah, it's really common theme here. I'm not too sure like why that is or or the reason behind it but yeah I just found that interesting so speaking of trading cards they actually have dedicated cafes to come and sit down and play with your cards and verse people so yeah this is really cool they really support the community here so right behind me we have this statue here called Azuma correct me if I'm wrong but I believe that that means eastern winds in Japanese so yeah that's sort of interesting isn't it for example just to give you an idea of the price, this doll behind me is 80,000 yen. I'll put up the conversions here, but yeah, these things don't come cheap. They even have playing card vending machines. How cool is that? to an owl cafe just around the corner here to check out some cute owls and sort of see what it's all about. Unfortunately, today is our last day in Japan, so we decided to pack in a few activities and do some unique catch and cook eating, which you'll see towards the end of this video. G'day and good morning guys, and welcome back to another day here in Osaka, Japan. I am so excited to take you around here. We're right outside now with the hemp five ferris wheel so uh let's go and check it out so this ferris wheel is actually in this massive mall here we have to go all the way up to the seventh floor you can see it actually just above me here so uh let's go up and check it out So that's another thing that I've noticed in Japan is everyone queues to the right hand side of the escalator so anyone who wants to come across they just go in the left hand side and they can pass everyone so it's really efficient as soon as you just get on the uh, escalator people just go to the right and if you're in a rush you go to the left so makes sense. Okay, 
so we just came into the ferris wheel we just scanned our amazing passes which we used yesterday so uh let's jump on <laughs> bonus is no queue we rocked up early this morning no queue straight on so uh that's good too let's um see what this view's like This is super nice. Just like sitting up here, chilling. I'm not sure how long we go around for. I think it's once, but we'll soon see if we get to go around again. But wow, this is cool. Anyone who is afraid of heights, probably wouldn't recommend it. Or just don't look down. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is pretty magical. Okay, we have just reached the top. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. For only 3,600 yen, so good. So as well, in every single cart when you jump in, they have these little uh, information stickers that show you what's on each side, north, south, east and west. So when you get in here, have a little read, because it actually is quite fascinating to sort of see what you're looking at. This Ferris wheel is a great way just to see the whole of the city. And it's fun too. <laughs> Restaurant. I will put the name here because it is way too hard to pronounce. So uh, yeah, let's go in and um, check it out. Uh, yeah, can we catch our fish? Ah, okay. Yeah. Fishing. And, yes, fishing. Ah, okay. Yeah. Fishing, fishing is cooked. cooked. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. okay. No okay. Japanese? Uh, no Japanese. Ah, okay. Yeah. Nime? Uh, yeah. Okay. Alcohol show. Alcohol. Wait, wait, wait. given a list of instructions just bear with me guys in this video there's a lot going on here so I believe here we have our bait I just need to read these instructions and work out how we're meant to fish and what we're meant to do none of the staff here speak very good English at all so we got to try and work this out but we'll work it out so pretty much what we have to do is there's only one type of fish that uses the bait for fishing if we choose that fish, then we can use the bait and use the fishing rod. Any other type of fish, we use a yellow fishing rod to just hook them. And then we um, catch them in the net and then tell the staff what fish we need, I think. So let's see if we can do this. See how we go. Fishing in Japan. <laughs> right. See that ball. Right, here we go, here we go. Oh, 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 we got one, I got one. Okay, we've got our fish. <laughs> so now all we have to do is give this to the staff and tell them how we want it cooked. Oh, you do that. Yeah. Uh, seven. Um, so we can get it in sashimi, grilled, tempura, deep fried skewered. Maybe that's good. Uh, two, two. 
Oh, two. Okay. Um, and uh, salt grilled. Salt grilled. Yeah. Radio. So uh, that's how you catch a fish and get it cooked here in Japan. <laughs> so uh, let's sit down and see how the uh, fish come out. So when you come here, you can actually sit in a boat as well, which um, is another option too. Okay, so we have sat down and they've just put um, this like little taster thing in front of our plate called a tush. Now, I don't know if it's meant to be had with the fish or by itself. Um, if everyone starts laughing at me, it's meant to be with the fish, but let's just taste it without it. It's sort of like, um, it's just a type of seasoned vegetable. Really nice. So we've obviously, we went for fried, deep fried skewers for our fish. And we also got salt grilled as well. So I'm really excited for this to come out. So all together, including, we've got two draft beers as well and the fish. All together, it should come out to be about 40 Australian dollars or about um, $30 US. Beautiful. Yeah. In saying that, here come our beers now, so cheers guys. Oh, that's lovely. A lovely draft beer. Can't beat it. Okay, so we've just had our salad and deep fried fish come out. I was going to wait for everything to come out so I could film it, but this fish is hot, so we're going to give one a taste right now. So I'm just going to try it with the black sauce. Oh. Oh my god. Mmm. Oh, that is so good. As soon as I crunched in, the whole thing just melts in your mouth. I'll try it without the sauce now. You know, I'm not normally a massive lover of fish, but when a fish is good, I love it. Like, it has to be really good for me to love it, and this is great. As well, another thing I love about this is the batter isn't even that heavy. It's like so thin. It's like crazy. So nice. Mmm. <laughs> wow. Definitely come here. I'll leave the Google Map link in the description. If you're coming to Japan, you need to come to one of these restaurants. So good. One thing I realized as well, the reason why this is so fresh is because I literally just caught it. When can you ever catch something and get it cooked pretty much straight away via a chef in a full, ready prepared kitchen with everything to go? You just can't. Even if you cook it yourself and, and fish at a beach and come home, it's still not as fresh as this. It's literally from water to plate in literally 10 minutes. So awesome. So with any good piece of meat, fish, main course dinner, you want something to come with it. In that case, we have salad. So uh, let's give this a shot. It's got some lovely mayonnaise, croutons, um, red onion, and whole sorts. So let's give this a go. Mm, really nice and fresh. Complements the fish well. Can't complain. So nice. Oh my gosh. So take a look at this fish. Wow. So this is the salt baked fish. So I'm just going to pull back the skin here and get some of this meat. Just bear with me. Gosh. Right, I might have to use my hands for this. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Okay. That's it. No bones too, only bones on this side, which is really nice actually. Wow. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of seasoning on it too. A bit of lemon. So we'll try some of the skin as well. Mmm. Oh wow. It's like slightly pan fried on each side. It's really crunchy. Super fresh too, so fresh. Mm. That with the lemon on top, beautiful. So we'll just dip some in the sauce as well. Oh, having it with the sauce, 10 out of 10. Now, 
Anyone in the comments, can you let me know what this is? Because I have no idea. Um, I'll just give it a try, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it tastes like a vegetable, I think. Let me know in the comments. So I'm just about to try the tail of the fish, which I have been told is actually the nicest part of the fish. So let's give this a taste. Yep. They're not wrong. Wow. Mmm. So good. So good. I gotta say, this is a very amazing experience. If you're coming to Japan, you want something a little bit different, you know, from the classic ramen shops or, um, or your sushi shops as well, definitely come here and try something like this. It's really fun as well. If you have kids, bring them, take lots of photos. It's a really good experience. So we're gonna dig into this and uh, finish this one off. Visa? Yes, visa. Okay. Rightio guys, so that ends today's video. Thank you for coming along. I hope you enjoyed the Ferris wheel and I also hope you enjoyed this restaurant. As always guys, keep it real and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.